So today we are going to talk about the basic tools that you have in your drawing kits. So you should have your sketchbook, you should have at least five different pencils, an eraser, yours might look a little bit different than this, and a smudge stick. And this week's lesson we're just going to overview what all of these different tools are for, um, some problems that you might solve with them, and just a basic overview of different types of drawing pencils. So anytime you are doing any entry in your sketchbook, you want to add the date to the top of it. I am recording this in August, so I'm going to add the 25th on the top of my page. <coughs> With your pencils, you are going to notice that they have different numbers and letters on them. So this one is a 4H pencil, and this one is a 2B pencil. Now you may have wondered, why in the world do we call these classic yellow pencils number two pencils? Well, if you look closely at most of them, they have HB on them. And HB is a way to distinguish what type of lead is being used in the pencil. So basically what those numbers and letters mean are this. Um, so this is a basic scale and it's going to let you know what type of lead is in your pencil. Don't worry, this will be online for you too. <coughs> so an HB pencil, this is your classic yellow number two school pencil. And the reason that we like to use these, especially for standardized tests, is because um, they are soft enough for you to erase well, but they also make dark enough marks that they're really easy for you to tell what's going on. And as we change up the scale this direction, these types of pencils are gonna make really, really dark marks, and these pencils are gonna make softer, sketchier marks. So as an artist, it's really important for you to know how to use these different tools. So as you come up on problems like I'm sketching something out, I'm planning something out, or I need to make a really intense dark shadow, um, you're going to know which type of pencil in your drawing kit that you need to use. So <coughs> in your drawing kits, you should have a 4H pencil. This is the first one that I'm going to start with. So one way that you can use your sketchbooks is as a place for you to practice different materials, practice using stuff, and this is going to be a place where I can take some notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 4H pencil, and I've got it labeled right here, you should actually be able to tell pretty close off the bat that these are um, really light marks. We're gonna start light and work our way dark. What you're going to do is across the page of your sketchbook, you are going to change up the pressure that you're holding down on your pencil as you go across the page. And you're gonna try and make really, really light marks and really, really, really dark marks just by changing how you're holding your pencil. <coughs> One thing that you should play around with anytime you're playing with your pencils um, and you're drawing is how you're holding it. Most of us hold our pencils like this because we're so used to writing words and our names and pressing down hard on our pencil lead so that we can make sure that whatever we're writing is really easy to see. But sometimes, you need to adjust how you're holding your pencil. And by changing your pencil and holding it back a little bit further, you're going to be able to make softer, sketchier marks. So play around with that too as you work your way across the page. So maybe you press down a little bit harder by holding it a little bit closer. Maybe you adjust it back just a couple of inches and then you're not gonna be able to press down quite so hard. And that's gonna help you get some lighter, softer, sketchier marks. So work your way all the way across the page. Again, changing up how you're holding your pencil. Try and get it really dark, really light. Hold it back a little bit more. Maybe I'm using a little bit more of the side of my pencil. 
But one thing I like to do when I'm listening in class is I can tell what type of pencil my students are using just by listening to the sound it's making on the paper. So you should be able to hear kind of a scratchier sound the higher your H pencil because these pencils have really hard lead in them but they make really soft marks. So once you go all the way across, changing light, medium, dark, I want you to make a box. And I want you to make that box just as dark as you can manage it. So maybe you are pressing down really, really hard, but you're also maybe layering up your pencil marks in a couple of different directions. You're making some overlapping lines, which we will talk about later when we talk about value scales. But try and make the darkest box that you can possibly manage. Like so. Then you're gonna switch to your next pencil. So your next pencil in your kit should be your 2H pencil. So I'm gonna label it again, 2H, and I'm gonna go through the exact same thing by changing up the pressure of how I'm pressing down on my pencil all the way across the page. I'm gonna practice light, medium, and dark. <coughs> and you should be able to tell that these ones are a little bit easier to make darker marks with. And the light marks aren't quite as light as the ones from the 4H pencil. 2H pencils are great for sketching and planning. If you're practicing stuff, these are great ones to plan stuff out with because you can still get those darker marks, but they're really easy to erase. Same thing with this one. I want you to add a box and I want you to make that box just as dark as you can manage. So again, pressing down really hard, holding that pencil very similar to how you would if you were writing an essay, if you were writing your name down, if you were taking notes for class, layering up a couple of different layers of marks to get really, really dark, firm marks. Now, just comparing, and I know it doesn't show up great on the camera, but these are just a little bit lighter than these ones, but you should be able to tell as you're playing around. Up next, I splurged for fancy HB pencils for you guys. That's right, they're the exact same as these ones, but these ones look nicer, right? So this is an HB pencil. And if we flip back to this little guide, it's right here in the middle. So our H pencils are over here, <coughs> and these are light and really easy to erase. The lid is a little bit on the harder side, and your 2H pencils are great for sketching and planning stuff out. Your 4H pencils, especially when we get into talking about watercolor, you're gonna wanna avoid these ones because sometimes these can make little divots in your paper that make it even harder to erase. But architects like to use these um, pencils because they can make really sharp, precise, exact lines. These ones, your classic number two pencils, right here in the middle. So these ones should both feel and seem pretty similar to what you're used to using. Um, your mechanical pencil lead still uses number two lead, and that's that HB lead. But again, all the way across the page in your sketchbook, you are going to work. You're trying to get really dark marks by not pressing down quite so hard. How light can you get it? What are some medium values that you can find just by changing up how you're holding your pencil and you will work your way all the way across your page. I'm sure you've already guessed what we're gonna do next. We're gonna make another box. 
And again, we're gonna try and get it just as dark as we can manage. Now, different pencil brands will have just slightly different lead in them, depending on what KCDA gives us. They may not be the same Rembrandt ones that you guys have in your kits, but they should have really similar marking styles. And then we're going to switch over to the B side of our scale. So these have really soft lead in them. And of course you can get more specific ones. You can get even numbered ones and odd numbered ones as well. Some of you guys may have drawing kits at home that include a whole plethora of pencils. I know that my drawing kit at home has like 45 pencils in it. But by using, your 2B pencil is gonna be next. By using kind of these every other incremental steps, it's a lot easier to tell the difference between the pencil leads. So I'm, you can see I'm hardly holding this pencil at all. Um, I'm all the way back on it and it's still making marks that are almost as dark as the ones that we made with our 4H pencil and I'm barely touching the paper with it at all. But the nice thing about our 2B pencils is how dark you can get those values. Now B pencils have really soft lead in them and they blend together really well. They make smooth transitions between values. These are great pencils for um, cast shadows if you're trying to make really dark values. And playing around with those values and the differences between um, your highlights and your shadows, which again, we'll talk about later, um, but your highlights and your shadows, those differences are going to be um, what turns a good drawing into a really great drawing. So, the lightest values you can get with a 2B pencil are gonna be really similar to some of the darkest values you can get with some of your H pencils. If you guys have ever been hanging out and drawing and doodling in class before, and then you go to your next class and you see the side of your hand is all covered with pencil lead, you've probably been drawing with a pretty soft pencil. Okay, our final one is going to be our 4B pencil. This is gonna be the darkest pencil that you have in your drawing kit. And even just that first mark, <coughs> you should be able to tell like, wow, it's a very different pencil than the first one we started with. So I'm hardly, hardly, hardly touching the surface of the paper at all with this pencil. You can see how far back I'm holding it. And it's still gonna make in much darker marks than even some of these uh, H pencil marks. You can, however, get really, really dark values. You just kinda gotta play with it. So just by changing the pressure of your pencil, you should be able to see the different types of value. It's really hard to get light value with your B pencils. But just like before, we're working our way all the way across. And then finally, your final box, mine's gonna be kinda smushed because I was drawing so big. Couple of layers of that 4B pencil. And you should be able to tell the very, very darkest values you can get here are so much different than the ones that you have up here. So, those are your basic pencils, but we're not finished with all the tools on our drawing kit just yet. You also have one of these blending stumps. I like to call them smudge sticks. They're essentially pieces of paper that are really, 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 really tightly wound together. And what you can do with these is you can use them to smudge together and blend together different values. So, <coughs> because these tend to get a little bit on the messy side, we're gonna start with our 4H pencil and I'm gonna use it and I'm just gonna blend it together like so. Now, because those H pencils are so light and they have kind of hard lead, they don't blend together super, super great. Um, you will still be able to see <coughs> 
the individual pencil marks, um, the individual lines that you made. As you work your way down, they're going to be able to blend together and smudge together a little bit better. I'm using kind of a circular motion for this. I find that it kind of blends stuff together a little bit better, but you can play with doing it at different diagonals. You can play with it going across if you would like to as well. So I'm gonna work my way all the way down playing with these different types of pencils. Now, as you move into your B pencils, these ones are going to smudge together a lot better and a lot easier, and you will be able to see that your smudge stick starts to get a little bit on the dirty side. There are a couple of ways that you can clean it. The easiest way, if you have it at home, is just with some sandpaper. So all you do is you roll your smudge stick across a little piece of sandpaper just like this or honestly I've seen people do it on um, what are those called cheese graters you can do it on those two on the smallest size and then finally our 4b pencil smudging those values together and smudge sticks are a way to create smooth transitions between different values the final tool in your kit your eraser which, because I am cheap and you don't need to use them for that long, I have cut these. I have a big one for me, you guys get smaller ones. I am sorry. But what you guys are going to do is, now to see how these different pencils erase, um, right down the center of each of these marks that you have made, each of these pressure value scales, you are going to, just with one erase across, Try and erase these back as much as you can. And that is gonna give you a basic overview of what all of the different pencils in your drawing kit can do and how poorly or how well they can erase.